So right. we're just gonna have you pick your cup, Pastor hey, Kathy. I, so, I know you I already saw it. Saw it right That's when okay. I in, I saw it because it is my, it is my deal. It's faith above fear, and there's a lot of fear, so it needed just a little bit of faith. Yeah. Good morning and welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. My name is Liz and I am super excited because I have this amazing woman sitting next to me that I would love to introduce to you. Um, in other videos, we talked about the church that I attend, New Hope Community Church here in Gilroy, California. And my guest today is none other than Pastor Kathy hey, McVail, hey, hey. who is our executive pastor well, I, I say that, you know, that's my title. <laughs> but boss we, lady. Yes, this is our boss lady, and she is amazing. And so I'm thank very you. excited to have her here. And um, Pastor Kathy, first and foremost, thank you thank for you. just your willingness to support what we're doing on Morning Cup of Jesus okay. and just to be a part of it. You know, it's awesome to have you here. And thank I'm you. excited for this message. Me too. Today we're here and we are going to talk about a switchblade. And so in one of my last videos in terms of the caterpillar who taught me perseverance, I mentioned switchblades and I literally woke up and had a thought about switchblades. And I thought, what is a switchblade? Not many people are going to understand that. Right. 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 And so that's what I brought you in today is to talk about switchblades and how we can use a switchblade. So once we have an understanding of what it is, now how do we use it? And we'll even talk about experiences when we've used the yeah. switchblade in the yeah. past. Um, but before we get started on that, I just wanted to start with a quick prayer. Thank you, Liz. Um, so dear Heavenly Father, first and foremost, we just welcome you into this place. Lord, we know that you've given us this platform to speak on. And so we just ask that every single thing that we do, Lord, we invite you into, but more importantly, that we honor you with our Thank words, you, Lord. Lord, you've placed this burden in our heart, Lord, to serve others and to show others a new side of you, Lord, specifically your love Thank you. and how easy it is to be loved by you. And so, Lord, I just ask that you use both myself and Pastor mm -hmm. Kathy in this moment, Lord, speak through us. We don't know whose ears you have intended to hear this message, Lord, but we trust yeah. that you've chosen those people, Lord. And we just ask that their hearts be open to receive the words that we share with you today. Thank you. We thank you and we praise you for this amazing platform that you've given us. And it's in your name that we yes. pray. Amen. Amen. I just also want to say, Liz, thank you so much for inviting me. I know Liz shared with me a couple of weeks ago just what this whole, how this whole podcast just kind of gave birth. And I just so honored and I'm just so um, privileged, Liz, to be a part of this. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. No, I'm excited. And, you know, it's funny because as, you know, really this whole thing, it wasn't until I started attending New Hope that this whole idea of even having a podcast and, you know, what God was placing on my heart, even believing I could do it, you know, it really took place yeah. after starting to attend at wow. church. And wow. so, it's just amazing. You know, one of the things that we talked about in another episode was um, just being still yeah. and taking that time to really hear the voice of God, yeah. giving yourself the opportunity to do that. And I know that we're doing yeah. that in a Bible study yeah. currently yep. at church. And it's, it's so important. Yeah. It's so important to listen to his direction and not to be afraid, right? you know, yep. not to be afraid yep. of what he places in your heart, because we know that the enemy is going to lie to yeah. us and yep. try to stop that. Mm -hmm. And you know, just a few minutes ago, before we started recording, I spoke to you about um, a seed, yeah. you know, and the seed that God has placed inside of each one of us. And I feel like for me, this is that seed. Yeah. This yeah. is that seed that he's put in my heart and I can't ignore it. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. I right. actually tried to ignore it out of fear, <laughs> right. you know, that this wasn't for me and who yeah. am I? And I, I'm not a pastor, right. you know, I've not been trained. And so um, I'm excited to go forward yeah. on this journey. And it's funny because he's been opening up doors, yeah. doors yes. that I didn't even imagine that yeah. would be opened are now being open all because I said yes. Wow. You know, and so I'm excited definitely right. to share that. And, you know, one of the things that when you and I spoke about mm -hmm. this podcast, 
Um, you told me do it afraid. Yep. Just do it yep. afraid. Yeah. But do it. Yep. You know, and I so. think that's where I feel like, especially like I think we're we're all coming out of a really, really, really difficult time just in the last couple of years. And there's there's it just feels like the world is just kind of just kind of got angry and kind of got really mm -hmm. mad and aggressive. And I feel like I want to be encouraged. I mm -hmm. feel like I want to be encouraged. Like I have to encourage myself, but I love this idea, Liz, because people need encouragement. You totally. know, it's like in the, I love the idea of a morning cup of, of Jesus because yes. really it's like, I love my morning cup of coffee, but there is nothing like encouraging myself in Jesus or receiving what God wants me for that morning or yes. for that day or the situations that we're all going to go through. So Liz, just keep it up because I really feel like even just, you know, if it's for the one, yes. you know, it's like that day, sometimes like somebody will say one thing and it's like, man, I needed that. I yes. needed that. So I just feel excited about what yeah. you're doing. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the topic of today okay. is the switchblade, as I shared. And I shared the switchblade and mentioned you in it because the idea behind a switchblade for me, it came from you. You were who I heard speak about the switchblade and what that is. So okay. if you wouldn't mind okay. just explaining what is okay. a switchblade? Okay. Well, um, of course, I grew up in South City, so I would be famously known as a South City chick. I found <laughs> out that my sister, my, my hood sister over here, Liz, she grew up. <laughs> She gets my people. And of yes. course, we know physically a switchblade is a little mini knife, a little mini, <laughs> well, not the big knife. So, but I remember, um, you know, years ago when, you know, I, of course, the Bible is the foundation of what I live my life on. But there's one verse in Ephesians and it talks about how when you're going to go through battles and you're going to go through, it tells you to put your armor on. You got to put on your helmet. You got to put on your, you know, your, your breastplate. You got to put on your good news shoes. But at the end, I love this one. It says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So yes. this is our sword. And so I feel like, you know, when you're like in the, you know, in a fight, you've got your sword. Well, I'm not going to come packing, you know, my big Bible when Correct. I go out on places. So I, um, again, I, my testimony is I, of course, my husband's a pastor and I love that, but I really always struggled with reading my Bible. I knew that the Bible is the foundation of our lives. It's where we get our life. I call it the book of life where really we could to we get to look here for everything. There's everything's written for oh us, how to live our lives, yes. how to how to behave, how to act, how to walk with Jesus. And it was something that I knew as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, that that this is what I need to be doing. But yeah. I I really struggled with it. I felt like as a young mom, I have four kids. I was, you know, my husband's pastoring in this growing church. And I just literally, it's like I wanted to know Jesus. I wanted to know God but I really struggled with reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. It felt like another duty. It was yeah. like, I have all my get up in the middle of the night with those sick babies, cleaning the kitchen, doing laundry, bathrooms. And it's like, what? Like I have to read the Bible and mm -hmm. pray was like another chore for me. Totally. So I struggled, struggled for several years and quickly just finally, I just felt like I was always living in defeat, kind of always like my life. Jesus came in my life, but I felt like I was, there was no difference. I started having a lot of anger. I started feeling just a lot of the insecurities and life issues. And I was like, man, is this the Christ-like life? Mm -hmm. Is this what it's about? And the people that I really respected in the faith and I admired them, they were, you know, women just like me and you, but I felt like they really had a relationship with the word of God. And I mm -hmm. said, well, how do you read it? Do you read it? Like it's a, I felt like I was doing a checklist. Like, oh, I'm going to read. Okay. I'm going to read my Psalm one. And then it's like, okay, check. Jesus is happy now, but it wasn't coming in me. Yes. And so I, I, I actually just prayed a simple prayer and I just said, Lord, I don't love your word. And I want to, it's like, I'd rather read people magazine or good housekeeping or <laughs> any other thing than the Bible. Something but more interesting. Yes. I just yeah. felt like, you know, but I said, this is the only thing I know that's going to probably change me. Yeah. So I just said, Lord, I'm sorry. I, don't really love it. It's so embarrassing to admit it to God. You know, I don't love your word. And he's like, yeah. I know. So I prayed a simple prayer and I said, would you put a love in my heart for your word? And I still had to get up the next day and I opened up to Psalm one and I started to read just like three verses and I just took it like little chunks. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it was like, I'd stop. And then I would ask myself questions like, can I relate to anything that I'm reading? And am I doing something Lord that you want to speak to me about? And I felt like it started to like come in. Makes like all sense. of a sudden I was yes. like, I wasn't yes. doing a duty, but it was like, wait, I 
love this. And I, after six months and a year, I really started to see myself changing. It was a slow totally. change, but it was like, I started to becoming a little bit more like Christ. Well, I didn't know that even during that time that my husband was going to get diagnosed with a fatal form of leukemia. And basically he was given a two year death sentence and mm -hmm. they said, it's not if he mm -hmm. dies, it's when, when he dies. And yeah. I had four little kids, you know, seven, five, three and one and a half. And I was a stay at home mom and I wasn't working. And then I, of course I love my husband and I just was like, wait, I've never seen a healing. Like I've never seen anybody mm. that healed, even though I was reading in the Bible that, that God did heal people, but yeah. I didn't ever witness it. I don't even know if I believed that God could do that, but because you're so desperate that I wanted him not to live, I mean, not to die. So I started looking in the scriptures, like, does God heal? And then mm. I started getting like, yes, God heals. And I would write down those verses or my battle since I've been a little girl and I don't probably came generational. So I've always battled with fear mm -hmm. and always battled with anxiety. I would cry myself to sleep as a little girl. And I don't know what I was afraid of my parents dying or just was always anxious. Yeah. And so I started noticing that I, I was really dealing with a lot of fear and anxiety when your husband's told he's going to die. Literally. I know who I am when I lay myself on the pillow at night. And I thought, Lord, you know, my husband handles life way better than I do, but God, I have to, if this is what you've walked with me. So I started writing down verses and I, then I just started to get like these three by five cards and nobody told me to do it. So I wrote down, and this was one of my first ones. It was Psalm 34, six and seven. It says this poor man called, and I would put my husband, this poor man, Malcolm called and the Lord heard him and he saved him out of all his troubles. And then it's like, Lord, can you save him out of all his troubles? And then the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Mm -hmm. So I would say, Lord, you said in your word that you would deliver Malcolm and me from all these troubles. And that I would picture like he said, the angels of the Lord camp around him. Yes. So I would be like doing my dishes and I would kind of like put my three by five card by the sink and I would get, which I call it's a spirit of fear. It would grip me. All of a sudden I'd be washing the dishes or telling the kids, all right, pick that up. And then this thought would come in. It's like, Malcolm's going to die. Mm. It's been a year and a half and he's got, you know, six months, six months. Point. Right. Yeah. And I, yeah. I would just, all of a sudden it's like a spirit of fear. And it's like, Lord, you said that that this poor man called. And so I started to just like Psalms 56, three, when I'm afraid, I will trust in you. It's like, mm. God, I am afraid, but I'm going to trust in you or that Psalm 118, 17 says, I'm not going to die, but live and declare the mighty works of God. Yes. And I felt like, yes, I was kind of holding these as promises, but I felt like there's a verse that says faith comes by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. And all, I mean, the reality was we were still going to the doctors. They are still telling him he's going to die, but something shifted inside me that faith began to grow because the Bible says, if you have faith, even as a mustard, mustard seed, seed. Yes. and I thought I have that, that amount. And I actually used to wear this little necklace that a friend gave me and it had a tiny little mustard seed enclosed inside a little glass. And I would literally grip it like a visual of saying, mm -hmm. I have that much faith. The I'm mustard seed is like a tiny dot. And it was, wasn't like, these were prescriptions like, no. okay, like if I pray 10 times a day, then God's going to hold it to it. It started to build my faith. So I began to call them like, as I was teaching what God was showing me, it's like, we've got to get out our switchblades. Like yes. if you're going to go to war, you know, I want to have the sword. I want to have all the weapons that I can to battle. But I felt like these were like salvation for me. Like yeah. I would go in my car and I would post a scripture right on when I'd be driving or I'd be in the bathroom and I would literally like, you're putting on your makeup, you're just doing whatever. And all of a sudden it's that fear would come in and I would just grab like God's word, whether it's through these little three by five mm -hmm. cards. So mm -hmm. um, that's where the term, the switchblade came in. It was like, I just would say, I don't want to leave home without packing because I yes. know that at any minute, there's going to be an enemy who's going to continue yep. to bombard my heart and my mind with lies or fear. And I had to, the only way I knew how to fight it is through God's word. Totally. I just felt like, no devil, this is what God says. You right. know what? This is what God says. And it began to help relieve 
the anxiety. I mean, it was, it's constantly, to yeah. this day, it's still Well, and it, what's crazy, interesting is as we're recording, right, um, fear and anxiety and mental health issues have skyrocketed. Yeah, it's, I can yeah. tell you from mm -hmm. my own personal yeah. life and mm -hmm. people that I know that are struggling with mental health issues, they can't even get in to be yeah. seen by yeah. counselors it's anymore, it's true. right? These mm -hmm. psychologists and counselors, these family counselors, right. adolescent, right. Yes. you know, yes. anxiety yes. is at an all-time high right now, and yep. it's like, Children are so innocent yeah. and they shouldn't need know, this, I right? Know. But they do. Yeah, yeah. And so these switchblades yeah. are, I mean, it was like genius. I remember sitting in church one morning and you spoke and you talked, you actually had cards with you okay. and you said, you need to write them down. And right. Priscilla and I started doing that. Wow. We wow. actually, I mean, I literally, and Priscilla actually had a board um, and she, uh, like, I mean, notes all over. Wow. These cards were everywhere, right? We wow. had them in our cars. Wow. Like wow. we ever literally, we put them everywhere, our dashboards, wow. our mirrors. It was like, we had to remember yes. what his promises yes. were as new, yes. new Christians, yes. you know, people, women who had just given our lives to God. And I mean, it literally, you know, we were in that point where we were absolutely broken. I was in a place where I was shattered. I felt shattered inside and I needed something. And I know for me, one of the early scriptures that I now call my switchblade is um, Proverbs 31, 25. And that um, she she's clothed with strength and dignity and laughs without fear of the future. Wow. Because I didn't know what my right. future held for me at that point. Wow. I had just come out of an engagement and a 10 year relationship. And I decided that I was not going to put up with the verbal abuse that wow. I was, you know, yeah. feeling or, yeah. you know, under attack with by that time. And now I know that was the enemy. Yeah. That was one of the ways yeah. that was a vessel. My fiance was a vessel used mm -hmm. to destroy me. Wow. And unfortunately he was allowing himself yeah. to be used, you know, and I'm thankful because I walked away from it. Wow. I, I didn't get married. Yeah. Right. That's part right. of my testimony. Right. I'm still not married and I, I'm absolutely yes. so thankful. Right. Yes. <laughs> I'm absolutely thankful that that didn't take yeah. place yeah. because I would have been tormented. And in right. all reality, as I see the path I'm on now, I wouldn't be where I'm right. at now if I was still right. in that relationship. Right. So that scripture at that time, yeah. because I was shattered Powerful. and I felt humiliated, mm -hmm. But to know, you know what? She's clothed yeah. with strength and dignity. Right. I have strength right. and I am not the woman right. that he wanted me to believe that right. I was. I am more than, yeah. right? And so that was one of my early ones. And I thought, gosh, like, this is it, you know, yeah. like this, I'm going to hold on to yes. this and I'm going to, I don't know what the future mm -hmm. holds, but I'm going to trust God's word and trust that I'm, he's, I, yes. I'm going to walk into this yep. future with him, whatever yep. it may be, Absolutely. you know? And I think like, too, if you go to the doctors and you give them your symptoms, you're like, I don't feel good. I have a headache. My bones are hurting, whatever. They're going to take all their information yep. and then they're going to write down a prescription. Totally. And so I always look at these of like, listen, I wish it was a quick fix. I wish that because I prayed all of these verses, God's like the magic genie because God is God and he's sovereign mm -hmm. and he's going to have his way. But when I look at these are like, these are my prescriptions. Like back in, um, during the whole COVID thing, I was really back. It's like, you think I'd have mastered fear and anxiety with all that I've gone through. So I was sitting in my room and I was really struggling. And I, I think I dated, it was like August of 2021. And I said, Lord, I am not doing well. I can tell mentally I was not doing well. You'd think I'd have all my switchblade scriptures <laughs> and I'd be healed. No, we're, we're like, it's, it's, it's a life journey. But I remember I wrote down was if like I was sitting with my doctor telling them all my symptoms. And then the Lord gave me Isaiah 43, five, fear not Kathy, for I am mm. with you. He said, write down Isaiah 43, number one, fear not because I've redeemed you and I've called you by your name, Kathy, you're mine. And Deuteronomy 31 says, Kathy, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't panic before them for the Lord, your God's going to personally go ahead of you. He's neither going to fail you nor abandon you. And that's why I feel like God's word is alive. Like it's Jesus. It's his word. Mm -hmm. He's saying, listen, Liz, yeah. it's like, I will give you strength and dignity. It's like the enemy yes. wanted to take that. The enemy doesn't want you to have a future, yes. but it's like, he's saying you are clothed with it. Yes. You are going to, you're not going to fear the future. You're going to, mm -hmm. one of my versions says that she's going to laugh at the days to come. Yeah. Like going to look at the future of like, ah. Because I think that's, that's why I love 
God and Jesus so much because mm -hmm. he really, he, he's the answer. It's like, I look at, I look around and I see we're, you know, as a believer, we're just as broken. We're going to go mm -hmm. through struggles mm -hmm. of people that don't maybe have faith, but I think we don't have to be strong. We don't have to be full of all this faith and courage. We get to be broken. We yes. get to be, yes. we get to be little, we get to be, we get to be his daughters and that he's giving us, you know, his loving arms and he's carrying us with us. But I think that's why I love that, you know, my husband and I, we get to encourage people, Yeah, you know, just to say, come on, we're not going to do this alone. We're no. not going to do this by ourselves. We have a community, yes. a community of faith. And that's, I mean, even now you guys, I'm super encouraged just yeah. sitting here and just hearing what God's done in your life. It's like, Thank you. Well, Lord. and it's important to take the direction, right? Like God's mm -hmm. placing you somewhere for a reason, yeah. you yeah. know? And so we very easily could have heard you say, you know, take out right. your three by five cards, right. get your switchblades ready. Right. And we could have done nothing with right. it. Right. But it was meant yes. for us. God knew Thank what you. the two of us yeah. were going through during that time. And it was meant for us. And we build a habit over it. And it was almost, you know, um, I can't speak for Priscilla, wow. but I can speak for myself when I say that it made me want to read my Bible wow. because I was very much right. like you. The Bible right. didn't mean anything right. to me. Right. And it wasn't until I started coming to New Hope um, and I was watch following another church online because of COVID that I started to like application. Right. I started understanding right. application yep. of his word. Right. And it's funny because this morning, literally this morning, uh, my daughter wakes me up and she's like, mom, are you going to make breakfast again? You know, I've been home not okay. working the last okay. couple of weeks. And so she's like, are you going to make breakfast again? And I said, yeah, but we only have one potato. So I told her, I, I can't, I'm not going to go to the store right now. Right. So I told her I'll make what I can, but it's not going to make that much, you know? And she's like, okay. And so I go and I make breakfast, right? I cut, dice up the potatoes. I dice up some spam and I take four eggs out and I start putting, you know, and right now I'm really watching those eggs because the price of eggs has been crazy, Absolutely. right? So I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, you know what? Get me another egg. So I put a fifth egg in there. And I made breakfast and I ended up with this pan wow. full of potatoes, spam right. and eggs. Right. And so my son, before he went to work, I made him a burrito. My daughter wanted two burritos before she went to school. So I made her two burritos. My mom who lives with me made herself two burritos while I dropped my daughter off. And then when I came back, there was enough for me to make two burritos. Yes, I love that. Right. And so before I started doing anything else, after I came back, I opened up my Bible app and I'm on a, a 365 Bible okay. plan to reread okay. the Bible again. Mm -hmm. And what's in my reading of the day? Mm -hmm. Matthew 14. Mm -hmm. And the five loaves and the two fish. That's the best. The parable of the five right. loaves and two fish. And I started laughing and That's I told mom, I called my mom, a oh, mom trip out on this. And I started explaining, you know, this is what happened. And it's so funny because I could have gone to the store, but I was not about right. to having just woken up. Right. But it just made me like, gosh, even in these little yes, things, God yes, provides, yes. right? He's so real. Right. That's the thing. I have a mom that is, I mean, she has wild and crazy God stories. And every time I talk about my mom, it's like people always like, I want to meet her, but she's from El Salvador. And she'll always say, you know, I'm not from this country and English is not my first language. So I'm not sure, but I am telling you, you guys, like Jesus is, she always says, he says he takes care of the widows and the Bible mm -hmm. says he takes care of the widows. So she always says, Lord, I'm your widow. And I know you take care of me. And I feel like she is never, ever afraid to ask God for anything. anything. She says, you go before me. I think she's probably the only person I know that has barely, barely pays car insurance because yeah. she always says, Lord, I don't understand any of this, <laughs> but she gets the deal. Or she's she owns two homes in the Bay Area where Crazy. my dad died 15 years ago. My mom never paid a bill. My mom didn't even know how to use an ATM card. I mean, the woman just puts it all before God and says, Lord, you have to help me pay my bills. She paid off the second home. It's in Burlingame, which, which is, is crazy. It's like over a three and a half million dollar home yes. that's been diagnosed. But this yes. little widow, she just trusts God's word. If God said it, she's like, no, if he said it, I believe it. Yes. And that's going to settle it. I and love so that. I, it's, I've really grown in my relationship with God with an example and of just someone who really who really believes that mm -hmm. the reality of Jesus of saying, listen, yes. we have 
five eggs and we have mm. one potato. And even to have that thought, I know, Liz, it could be like if somebody who doesn't understand this, but I feel like what Jesus is saying is like, Liz, I'm going to show you yes. over and over. I'm taking care of you. Yes. I'm going to show you and your kids how much I, I'm, I I'm love gonna, you. Yes, yeah. I love you. And I'm going to take yes. care of you in this moment. Yes. And it's funny because I had just shared with you before we started recording that I'm out on FMLA right now to take care of my mom who That's just had surgery. Family medical leave. Um, yes. Whatever. FMLA. Family, yeah, Family <laughs> Medical Leave Act in California. Okay. Good old California. Um, but when I had to file for family leave, because I will get paid, but when I had to file, I found out that somebody had um, submitted a fraudulent disability claim on my behalf. So the typical way of filing, mm. which would help expedite my pay, I couldn't do. Wow. And so it was so funny because I'm literally in that space right now where I still, I've been out since January 10th and I've not received pay since I've been out, but God is providing. Wow. And so it was, it's like some people would overlook mm -hmm. that and it would be mm -hmm. no big deal that their whole family ate on one potato and five right. eggs. Right. But we literally all ate and walked away with like full bellies, not rationing. Right. You know what that's, I'm saying? It's like the power of God. That. And I couldn't help but see God yeah. in that. Right. And I right. think that again, it goes back to unknowing his word yeah. and reading his word and having those scriptures and saying, you know what, God, you will provide right. for me just right. like you fed. And in the Bible, in Matthew 14, he fed thousands yes. of people, yes. right? This is just my right. little four person right. home. Right. And it's like, I love when it says, like, he says, I'm the same yesterday today and forever. It's like what God did in the past. That's yes. why even with my husband's cancer in that situation, it's like, I, I believe doctors, I believe in nurses, I believe God uses Correct. all of them, but I just know that it's like for whatever reason, and I even feel this way, Liz, if I never prayed a single prayer and never used my switchblades and never, you know, ask God for anything, if it was God's plan to keep my husband um, here, he would have answered in spite of anything I did. 100%. The only reason why I felt like I had to have this crazy faith or this crazy amount of like getting in my word is because I was so full of fear. I yeah. was so full of anxiety. Every single time we would leave the doctor's office and they just kept saying, it's just a matter of time. It's mm -hmm. going to accelerate. It's going to, and that was my reality. But we would, we'd go home, we'd cry, we'd be very human and be like, what are we going to do? And then we would go back into the battlefield of saying, mm -hmm. all right, Kathy, your mind has got to get renewed. It's because my fears and the lies and everything that's coming at you, it's like, it's hitting you all over. And that's where I felt like, okay, faith comes by hearing and hearing mm -hmm. God's word. It's like, Lord, I need to feed my yep. mind with truth totally. because the enemy was bombarding me with a lot of reality and a lot of the lies. Correct. And you know, I can relate to that because um, when, so you mentioned COVID <laughs> earlier and um, Priscilla and I actually went to Prayer Mountain in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Yes. We went, it was, I believe it was in 2020. It was right before, it was right after okay. things had been shut down. Okay. And um, we, it's kind of a funny story, but we went to go use the bathroom. And this was our first time ever okay. at Prayer Mountain. Okay. And so we went to go use the bathroom and there's no toilet paper and any of the stalls. And I'm like, oh, there's no toilet paper here. How's there no <laughs> toilet paper here? And of course, toilet paper was a thing yes, back then too, yes, right? That's funny. But yep. the lady, you know, there was a woman that came out and she said, you bring your own toilet paper to Prayer Mountain. Oh. And I looked at her and I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. This is my first time here. And apparently she's part of the groundskeeping okay. there. So she works for them. And so she was explaining that to me and she said, but I'll give you some. And so she went to go grab some toilet paper and she came back and then she looked at me and she said, do you love Jesus? And I, I was kind of taken yeah. back, like, you know, and I said, yes. Yeah. And she, you know, at first I believe I asked her what, like, right. I almost questioned right. what she said. Like, did I hear right. what I thought I heard? And she said, do you love Jesus? And I said, yes. And she read verbatim Psalms 91. Wow. And it, the timing of it was just so unreal. Wow. Wow. And I'm not going to read the whole right. thing, but Psalms 91, seven says a thousand may fall at your side, wow. 10,000 at your right hand but it will not come near you. Wow. And I took that personal. Yeah. I absolutely. took that so personal, right? Absolutely. She didn't have to come up to me. Wow. She didn't have to speak to me. I was nobody right. at this place right. like that she right. knew. And it was funny because she kind of came reprimanding yes. me about the toilet right. paper at right. first, right? 
but in her heart wow. was to share. Right. It was like, I, I'm sure God spoke to her that. in that moment yes. Yes. and she knew. And I, re I, I stood wow. on that. I stood on that scripture. And interestingly enough, when people were running around and stockpiling, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, my family never stockpiled. Wow, Liz. And it was because yes, of yes. what she had yes. given me that day. And I remember there was a particular day. So we shop at Knob Hill here in town and it's probably one of the more pricier yep. grocery stores. Right. right? And I spent just over a hundred dollars and I was floored because it was the first time I had walked into the grocery store and saw empty shelves right. that had never right. happened in my lifetime. Right. right? And so I, I was like, wow. And I remember walking around and I went to go grab, I remember specifically Alfredo sauce. And, um, in my mind, like I had the thought only grab what you need. Wow. Only grab what you need. Do not get extra. And it automatically yeah. took me yeah. to Moses wow. in the wilderness, yeah, okay. right? Okay. And where he was instructed, manna fell yes. from the sky, yep. but Just take only take what day. you need for the yep. day. Don't take extra. Right. Right. And when they tried, it would spoil, wow. yep. right? Or yep. worms or whatever yes. the case yes. may be. Yes. It was no good. He yep. wanted you to trust right. him. He was building a That's spirit so of faith good, in Liz. them, right? Mm -hmm. In the wilderness. And I was reminded of the five loaves and yeah. the two fish again. Wow. And so I spent just over a hundred dollars. My mom went to Costco, spent a hundred dollars. And I will tell you, Pastor Kathy, we ate for probably what felt like three months on those groceries. Wow. Like wow. it was amazing. And right. at the time I had my two older nephews okay. living with me. Okay. So it wasn't just the four right. of me. Uh, the four of us, the right. four of me, the four of us. So currently it's my son, my daughter, my mom. Right. Um, but at that point I had two of my almost adult nephews living with me. And then Priscilla and her son were also living with me at the time. That's the best. So eight of us mm -hmm. were here in this right. household wow. and we literally wow. ate off of $200 <laughs> of groceries so for like three months. And we had meals. Like that this is, wasn't like we're eating right. rice and beans. Right. Like, like you ate. We ate. You ate. We were eating yeah. like four yeah. course, five course I, meals. And I the kids it. are like, this is crazy. We're it. eating steaks. I, we're, I mean, it. it was like, it was amazing. Wow. And God showed up so wow. much. And that scripture, like Psalms 91 yeah. has never left me. And yes. what amazed me is because that's a pretty long like yes. chapter, right? Yes, it is. And this yeah. woman quoted it verbatim wow. in front wow. of Priscilla and I. That it was is, amazing. And well, it was touching. Yeah, that's one of the, um, when we were very first diagnosed, I remember we got the news and we had to go now tell our church board, our church leaders that he was diagnosed with a fatal form of leukemia. We were only there for two years. And so we felt like we have to basically go in front of the, them and say, you know, you have a sick pastor and are they going to want to keep us on? Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the men in the room, he just said, wait, he's like, and he opened up his Bible and he read, and I don't even know if I ever remember hearing Psalm 91, but he just stood there and he kind of mm. opened it up and spoke, Ugh. you know, long life you will have. Yes. And that the Lord is your shelter. He's your, and I remember just like, like even then it was just something that, that that's why when you talked about the, the mug, like faith, I never, um, I always battled fear. And so to me, the opposite or like that, could I be a woman of faith? Because yes. I knew I was a woman of fear. Ooh. And so I felt like- Or the enemy wanted you to believe you were a woman of fear. That's all he would say. Yes. He to this day loves to keep reminding me. It's like, I know who you are. It's like, mm -hmm. oh no, I no, know you who don't. you are. Yeah. You know, it's like, I know how to fight you. So I feel like that is where- like learning, like learning how to, you know, take your thoughts. Cause I'm telling you guys, we could be, I was in church Sunday singing the worship songs and, you know, you're in looking at the words and I'm worshiping. And then it's like my brain, my thought, somebody hurt my feelings, you know, probably mm -hmm. a couple weeks before. And it was like, that thought came in my mind and it's like, Oh, they bugged me so much. And I'm like, Oh, sorry, Lord. I'm yeah. back to you. Yeah. And it's amazing yeah. how we have to retrain our thoughts because totally. for so long I've lived my life entertaining myself with just whatever randomly comes, comes in. And now I feel like I'm on this journey where it's like, no, I literally want to to really think about what I'm thinking about. And yes. I want, I don't want to go on that path of negativity, critical discouragement. I want to really retrain my brain totally. and really think well and love well yes. and care well. And these scriptures help you do it. You they know, do. they really, they do. really do. When I, when I think about um, the switchblade and I think about how powerful it is, and you know, I know you and I have spoken about the fact that 
this is a spiritual war that yeah, is happening. It, is. it really is. The enemy is mm -hmm. out to destroy yeah. us mm -hmm. because he does not want us to live yeah. in eternity with yeah. God. Yeah. He really doesn't want eternity for mm -hmm. us. So his goal is to break us yeah. now. And I feel like, you know, call me crazy, but I feel like we are in the end times yeah. and he's working overtime. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like, absolutely. gosh, like he's been attacking me yep. my whole life. Yeah. But I feel like this liar is right. coming yep. hard right absolutely, now. And he's Liz. trying to take down. I know you spoke about yeah. it at New Hope. Um, that the pandemic yeah. wasn't COVID. Right. The pandemic is right. the broken families yes. and how the enemy is trying to yes. destroy our yes. families. Yep. And I've, I'm a yep. product of a, of yeah. a destroyed family. Right. And I feel like, gosh, you, you'd come after that man. Right. You take that man yep. out of the home. Yep. You destroy the man. Yep. You, it's like bowling. Yes. Yes. You take all the pins yes. down with it. You yes. get that one right yes. shot and everything well and falls. i feel like especially you guys i mean your moms you know it's like mm -hmm. you go after your babies you Ooh. go after it's like then yeah. that's when we're gonna have some problems here totally and so i feel like for me as a mom i remember feeling like you know it is my responsibility it's like it's not the school's responsibility it's not even the church's responsibility it is our responsibility to train up our kids yes. and to raise them up and to teach them and guide them because they are living in a crazy i thought i grew up in the 70s and i thought we were wild yeah you know but i'm telling you now it's like it is the most confusing a scary i mean again i think each generation would probably say that but now i look at the little boys and the little girls and the bombardment of so much where bad is good and good is bad mm. and so i feel like we are in a, a real real war and we don't fight a war as believers like the world does. They hate, mm -hmm. they judge, mm -hmm. they condemn, they cancel, they do all yes. these things, you know, where it's like, no, we we are gonna fight this war with God's love and God's truth and God's yes. peace and God's presence and God's acceptance and forgiveness. We talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think that this world needs to see Jesus in a way where we haven't represented him well. Correct. I think the church hasn't done very good mm -hmm. at being different because we're just as angry yes. and judging and mean. Yes. Sometimes even yes. meaner. Mean. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I've been behind some mean and I've been a little mean <laughs> myself, but that's where I feel like I'm ready, Liz. And I that's what I love about you. And I sense that, that you are ready to, let's just, let's show jesus let's yes. show jesus to broken people yes. like you and i yeah you know what i mean yes. and being honest and vulnerable totally. and you know i just feel like i i um i just went to an event where i was in a room with about 25 women that were probably in their late 30s and early 40s and you know they just looked together you know they mm -hmm. looked very together they they were pretty they had all their you know they had it all going on but in my heart i just kept saying just you know, Lord, just give me that ability to, to have a conversation mm -hmm. that would just lead to, you know, how how you doing mm -hmm. or how's life going? And, mm -hmm. you know, I just think people need people to show care and love and yes. compassion. And I think that's but that's what Jesus does to us. Totally. He does that to us so that we can give it away. Totally. And, you know, while you were talking just a mm -hmm. moment ago and this, as I saw the, you know, the um, book in the Bible, Nehemiah. Yeah. Um, so Pastor Malcolm yeah. did a yeah. study on Love Nehemiah, it. right? Mm -hmm. And I remember at that point when he did that study, I took that very personally. Wow. And I took it as this is the time to rebuild the walls. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that stood out to me at that moment, and this was there was a lot going on in my larger family, so not my immediate family, right. but my extended family. And um, we were all raised in church, but a lot of us were not serving God, right. you know, prior right. to that. And so when I heard Pastor Malcolm talk about it, I remember one thing that stood out was that where people were placed. Okay. And people okay. were placed in front of their homes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To yep. defend their yes. homes. Yeah. And that stood out to me. And that was significant because yeah. to your point, mm -hmm. you mess with our kids. Oh. Right? It's that's when you're going to get the, you're like, the forget the switch blade. Right? Now right? I'm getting me big a real blade, machetes. A big blade, machetes. right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was like that, you yeah. know, but in that it was like, wait, you fight with one hand, you have your sword in one yep. hand, yep. right? That's and you good. work with the yep. other. That's good. You I never like let it down that's and right. you fight for that yep. family that's right good. now more than ever yeah. because the enemy is yeah. coming for our families. Yeah. He is trying to destroy our kids in this moment, right? 
And so, no, it's, you have to work because yep. we have to keep yes. going, but yes. don't ever forget that yep. sword. And That's in this it. case, that sword I is these switchblades, right? Yep. And the one that I have, it's Nehemiah 414. Do not be afraid of them. So Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your yeah. daughters, your wives, and for your homes. That's it. You know? Liz, I mean, that just sums it up. It was I killer. Like, I think that's what, you know, the majority of our lives, I mean, we're never going to, I don't know. I look at my life and I go, just turn 60, Liz. So it's a <laughs> well, big you're, deal. You're a great 60. Well, you're you know, a great 60. Thank you. You're kind of <laughs> But what I'm saying is like, you know, most of us are going to go till the end of our life very simple. We're just going to be known as somebody's mom, yeah. somebody's grandma, somebody's sister, somebody's aunt, you know, somebody's neighbor, somebody's friend. Yeah. And I just think, I think it's up to us to love that one well, you know, just mm -hmm. to be able to live like, I want to fight for my family. I feel like it's up to me. I had a mom that really took her faith very serious when yeah. she came to Christ. She really just knew it was her life mission to pray for my soul to pray for my sister and brother. And I look at her and I go, if it wasn't for her, I don't even know if I would be walking with the Lord. And I'm mm -hmm. so thankful. So I feel like the baton's been passed. And I think that's what we're doing is yes. like, we're going to keep this race going and then you're going to pass it on to your daughter yes. and to your son. And you're going to go now run. Yes. Now run, run, this race. It. yes. run this race. And they have to know yes. it. And we have to love them in the, in between the messy you know, middle, yes. the yes. messy middle, the where messy, <laughs> messy, <laughs> middle. messy middle, where we're like, you better keep running girl. Cause I'm yeah. about to, <laughs> where they <laughs> really, exactly. they got to literally run exactly. from you. Right. Yeah, exactly. no, definitely. You know, and I think that it's kind of funny because as I hear you, you know, um, one of the things, um, that stands out to me is, if, and for me that I had to remind myself, um, was just the plans that God has, yeah. right? Yeah. The God, the plans that he has for each one of us, yeah. you know, yeah. and that Jeremiah 29, 11 has been one of the other yeah. scriptures that yeah. I've had to stand on it's during beautiful. this time, right? Yeah. Because it does get challenging yeah. when we're fighting with our kids yeah. sometimes, right? Yep. Because they're not always at no. the same place that we are. Um, but our job as parents and as Christian yeah. parents is to meet them where they yeah. are, yeah. right? And love on them where yeah. they are and trust yes. God has a plan. Absolutely. Right. And a plan to prosper you, yes. to give you a future and yeah. a hope not oh. to harm you. Right. So the enemy is out to yeah. harm us. Yeah. Right. And that's the importance of these weapons. Right. And, I, and as I think about the switchblades, I think, you know, the spiritual yeah. war that we talked about earlier to your point, right. when we grew up on the streets, we could fight with yeah. those literal oh, weapons, yeah. right? Yeah. But we have to be prepared for yeah. a bigger fight yeah. because yeah. this fight isn't just about yeah. our souls. It's about yeah. the souls of our children. It it's is. about taking everybody yeah. down. And without the right weapons, right. you will not win right. this spiritual right. war. Right. And I think that's what I'm learning too, Liz, because it's been 40 years since I gave my heart to the Lord. And I look back at 40 years and I think, man, Lord, you'd think I'd be, you know, walking on water with Jesus. I would be, but I find as we go through all of these seasons, I am learning even now in my life that it's like, Lord, I get to be, I get to lean. I get to, I mm -hmm. get to know that Lord, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to, I'm going to be obedient and do yes. your word. But I know that he stands in so much more powerful and is for our kids and our family. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes me feel so hopeful because again, I think our human nature is to go, Lord, it's too hard. It's too mm -hmm. big. It's too scary. Everything oh, looks yeah. really like too dark at yes. times where you're like, it yes. feels like the enemy's winning. But yet I just go, no, that's why we stay anchored, Liz. That's yes. why we stay anchored to this. Like when you're, I always say, I have a lot of faith when I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I pray the most <laughs> incredible prayers when they're not for me. Yes. I can believe God for the impossible when it's not for me. And that's why the test, I believe, are used for us to grow us, to give us faith muscles, to show us how incredibly amazing God is. Like yes. I'm loving that story of the breakfast because I'm watching my daughter, mother, and She's got a little budget thing going right now. And, and yet she doesn't like to have to kind of live this tight, but she is seeing God's hand mm -hmm. so different than if things were just coming in convenient. Oh, totally. And I don't think this is going to be her life sentence, but I think he's building her found showing her. It's like, yes, I say I provide for you here and I provided for you there. And I think that's like, even for me, Liz, like going through the cancer, I wish 
that I could have said like, well, that's quota. Then mm -hmm. I did it seven years. Of, that was a hard, long seven years. And Lord, that was enough. Yeah. Like I want to be one and done. And I want to say, but as we go through life, I mean, we're going to have to battle through our, you know, aging families, or we go through mm -hmm. death of my father passed and all the things that, you know, my children, you know, didn't want to walk with God and walk away and all the things mm -hmm. that, you know, we want to be exempt from, yeah. you know, but no, I we're think not. I have, have like now like a, like kind of these little monuments all along my 40 years. And it's like, man, God, you were here yes. and you were here and you were here and you were here. And, oh, I didn't see that you were going to be here. And so that's why he's always like market, yes. market girls, market, market, because you're going to have to go back yes. when you're in the middle of it going, God is, am I going to get through this one? I'm going to see. You and through. remind yourself yes. what he did. You I'm know, it's it funny because um, as a child, so I was born with epilepsy. Part of my testimony is that I was born epileptic and it was hereditary in my dad's family. And um, interestingly enough, it was right around the same time where my parents got divorced um, and I was about 10 years old and I, we had a revival at my old church and a woman that they said had the power you know, of healing given to her by God, that was her gift, her, was spiritual healing. And I bugged my mom throughout this whole service to take me up there. That's you amazing. need to take me up. You need to take me up. And if she prays for me, I'm going to get healed. God's going to heal me, but you need to take me up. And my mom did not want to take me up. She'll tell you, like, it was, it was kind of funny. Like we laugh about it now. Um, but it got to the point that I bugged her so much. It's, I mean, I'm pulling on her wow. shirt during yes. service. She's worshiping wow. and I'm not stopping. Because epilepsy was really it was huge. something that you oh my battled gosh. as a child. Oh my gosh. Those... And it was terrible because Ugh. I would have seizures. Like I would fall at the big toy. So I went to Brown Owl here in town. And I remember this happened more than once that I was on the big toy. What's the big toy? The big playground, okay. the big wooden okay. structure. Wow. And I'm at the top oh of it gosh. and I would fall off of it oh and gosh, just have Liz. a seizure. Um, one of the worst ones was I was at a swim in a swimming pool. And my cousin luckily was diving off the diving board, my cousin, John, and he recognized that I was actually like going down. Although I was swimming, I was going to the bottom of the pool. So he got the attention of a lifeguard and they were able to pull me out, but I was actually having a seizure as I was swimming. So I'm literally wow. swimming across the pool. And the only I thing I remember was singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And that's all that's I was all saying over and over as I was swimming, but I was, I was having a seizure. So I'm oh in the gosh, middle of the Liz. seizure, but I'm singing hallelujah, wow. hallelujah. Wow. And they pull me out of the water. And that was probably, that might've been the last seizure I ever had before getting healed. So, but this was like, like a shame thing. Oh, me. totally. Like, because right. it was embarrassing. Yes, I mean, if right. you've like seen if you, somebody have a seizure, right. it's frightening. Oh right. yeah. You yes. know, but being the, yes. that I was that kid from the streets, nobody messed around with me. Nobody made like, fun right. of me at school, right. Right. but you I, know. I, you would lose wow. all control of I your can't. body. And they say you'll never be cured, right? Is Correct. That, it's, it was it's, supposed to be a okay. forever thing okay. that, I mean, my dad's siblings all still have it wow. as adults, as adults, as adults. Right. And so I went up there and I never took another medication again. And I was on some very high dose of medication. The medication was called phenobarbital. Yeah. I don't even know if they would still prescribe it wow. to kids these days wow. because it's so strong. And my body was so controlled by it that if I didn't have it literally at the same time every day, within five minutes, I'd have a seizure. My body needed this amazing. narcotic in order to survive, it's right? Incredible. It was so crazy. And after she laid her hands on me, I never took another pill again. And I never had it's another seizure. Right. Gosh, right. Wow. And I, and it's funny because for me, that was super significant right. because God knew yeah. that was the stamp that my, okay. my interpretation okay. is that right. was the marked day God's you. marked me mm -hmm. as his child. Wow. And I was terrible growing up. I was, I was on loving the streets and, um, I was not living a life that right. honored God at all. I was right. so far from it, but you can never tell me God wasn't real because he had healed yeah. me. Oh, it's a miracle. And so it's he, amazing, he put Liz. a stamp on yeah. me and wow. as a, as a mother and right. you know, you know, as a mom right. going to your doctor's appointments and they yeah. ask you about your medical history right. and all that. Right. And I have a medical history of yes, epilepsy. That's amazing. Right. And the doctor's like, I'm like, no, I'm not epileptic anymore. And they're like, what do you mean? You're not epileptic anymore. And I'm like, I, I was healed. 
And they're like, what? That is, you were healed. I, right. They, right. Like, like wait, science no, doesn't, right, no, science can't explain explain, what happened right, to me. Right, but I have like, the no. legitimate medical wow, history to prove wow. that I have been having seizures. I had been having seizures since I was two months I old. Just amazing. Right. And all of a sudden now it wasn't anymore. There's no more. I have no history of it. Neither. I have two children. It's incredible. Neither one of my kids have ever wow. been epileptic. And that's what I told the doctors when I filled out that stuff. I said, I'm not putting it because I don't have right, it. It's not. So right, there's no way I'm giving it no to more. my kids. These it's children will not be born with epilepsy and neither one of my ch children were. It's really, I mean, it's, it's a crazy, it's like, again, I hear this story and I think, God, you amaze me. Yeah. You amaze me. He's, he's it's so like amazing. He's real. Like, he's you know, so sometimes, real. I will sometimes we'll go, is, is this real? Yeah. And it's like, yes, this when is you real. hear stories like yes. Malcolm's healing, yes. you hear you go, stories, yes. my healing, yes. you, you can't, you ignore can't, it. you can't, expl it's like God, you can't ignore right. it. He's and that's so why I think this is a, it's not religion. It is relationship. It totally. Is, it's totally. like, you know, getting to know somebody, you know, over and over again in such a way of need. Yes. You know, it's like, I, there was an old song years ago by a Christian singer and her name was Kathy Dracoli. And she sang this song. And I remember during my husband's transplant, it was so tender, but she said, how would I know that God is a healer unless I needed healing? How mm. would I know that God is mm. the provider unless I needed provision? Mm -hmm. It's like, whatever our need is, it's like, Lord, I, I need to know that I could be secure in you because of fear. Correct. And you know, it's like, I think this is why tests and trials do sometimes are allowed because it shows us this side of God that we maybe have never would ever have wondered unless we have mm -hmm. a need for him. Totally. And he's okay with that. Totally. He's good with that. You know, it's kind of funny. I think um, it's Peter in the Bible yeah. who had the thorn and yes. he was like, yeah, take was this for Paul. Paul. Okay. Uh -huh. I always like Peter and <laughs> right. Paul. I always confuse the two of them. So Paul in the Bible has this thorn. We don't know yes, what the thorn right, is, right? right? It's not described what right. it is, but he's asking God to take this out I of know. me. And Jesus says, no, because if I did, you wouldn't have a dependence yes, on me. And I don't like to live my life like that, Liz, but right. I'm telling you, I feel like that is what's drawn me more to God. Cause I, you know, when things are going good, it's like, oh yeah, Lord, I love you. But yes. I'm loving my life too. I'm going, and yes. not that we go through stuff, but I, I feel like it's the stuff that we are, go through that shapes the person that God always wanted us to be. It's like, oh, he's like, I made you Liz. Yes. Exactly yes. the way I like you. I, I like yes. you this way. And I feel like, again, same thing. It's like, yes, I wanted to be the little, you know, wife that was just quiet mm -hmm. and lovely and just sat still and just said nothing. Totally. I tried. I tried for a week. So I that failed. wasn't really for exactly. me. Exactly. Not, not, life. Exactly. not about that life. No, no, no. Not at all. I'm like, I will cut you and I'll cut all of you. <laughs> you guys screw up, you're done. Yes, especially with these <laughs> exactly. switchblades, right? Oh, and it's, oh, and like, listen, I'm cutting you. And back in the day, it might have been a literal cut, but this exactly. time, it's like, no. And that's kind of the beauty of it, too, because. The reality of it is we are going to come across people yes. that we just don't no, vibe with, right? The, the energy is yep. off and, yep. you know, but now, you know, when I see that happen, it's right. like, you know, I don't, I can still have compassion. Yeah. Yep. God yep. has put that in my heart. So you can good. have compassion and just pray Yeah. because we don't know yep. what the situation yep. was. People would meet it's you today so and probably not believe oh, that you went true. through everything yep. you went through. People will meet me today. And, you know, having yep. just shared my testimony yep. at New Hope, People, I had people approach me after and like, I would have never known that right. about you. I would have never guessed oh, with who I see you today. Right. I would have never guessed. And right. you know, my thing is like, man, that's not even a half of it. Exactly. If you really knew about that's it. That's why it's the power of our story. And yes. I think that's why people need, and I know you had just shared that you and Priscilla, Priscilla's over here. You can't yeah. see her, but we get to Priscilla's see Priscilla's our producer. Exactly. She you know. is the it factor. Yes. Um, She's behind but the camera. they had just done a funeral for a yeah. friend of Priscilla's and it was, they were asked to speak at it and I thought you know sometimes you get a pastor up there or a minister and you're like ah what does he got to say but you get you know human mm -hmm. you know women up there just sharing saying like we get it we we represent each other we represent mm -hmm. the human race of saying we understand we you cut you know Christians they still bleed you know mm -hmm. we cut we, we we hurt yes exactly and I think that's why I I do I I continually continually and on this journey of faith of saying, Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to yes. be more like you. And we're going to be tested till we're dead. Yes. But and I you think know, when I spoke yesterday, that was kind of where I started. I, I was very clear. And I said, I'm not a pastor. Yeah. I don't want you to think that right. I'm a pastor. I'm not a pastor right. and I'm not here to preach to you, but I am a Christian woman 
who loves God and who understands the power of his love. Come on, And that's what I want to share with you. And that's what we did. You know, and I think that that's the best thing that we can do is be our genuine self. We are not perfect. We have life happening to us as the two of us have just shared. And I know we can go on and on and talk about these stories, right? But the reality of it is life is happening to us just like it's happening to you. And inviting God in, reading your Bible. And that was one of the other things I said at some point, I said, you don't have to believe it. There was a story, not a story, but a saying that I've heard. And I wish I remembered where I heard it, Um, but I shared it yesterday. And I actually, in closing, that's what I shared. And what I said was, you know, I've heard the question asked, why did Jesus hang out with sinners? And I said, the answer is Jesus didn't hang out with sinners. Sinners hung out with him. (laughs) And they hung out with him because of the fact that he showed genuine love. He didn't judge. That's true. You know, he didn't judge. And and I I said it in the crowd. I said, you don't take my word for it. Pick up your Bible and read the stories over and over and over. Everybody that was used to do the greatest work. Yeah. They were what social, pe- social society, yes. culture yes. would say were sinners. Yep. They are the people that were less than. They were the social outcasts, yet God used oh, them. It's true. Right? It's and it was just so because true. they were open to being yes. used. They were open yes. to his word. They were open to the truth that was there. And they trusted yes. the love that he showed yes. them at that time. And they did miracles because right. of it. And miracles, you said it earlier. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The miracles weren't just for the Bible. No, We're living proof that miracles are for people who live today. They are happening every single day. But the enemy wants you to believe that there are no miracles with your name on it. The enemy wants you to believe that God's love is not for you. Mm -hmm. And that is a lie that is meant to destroy you. I agree. It is meant to destroy all of us. And so it is, it's important. You don't have to take anybody's word for it. You just have to open up your Bible and find your own switchblades. I believe it. I believe Create your own blades. Amen. I believe it. And this will get you through life, right? (laughs) So let's, we've talked about switchblades. We've shared some of our own personal switchblades. What would you say to encourage somebody who's maybe not so familiar with the Bible and doesn't know where to start building their own switchblades? What advice would you give them? Well, I, a couple of things. I remember when I was um, 20 and my mom had already been a Christian and I was in a real serious relationship and I wanted to figure out what can I get away with? It was not like, oh, can I have sex before marriage? Can I do this? Can I do that? And I remember knowing that in the Bible, in the back, it was like, um, you could look up like a kind of a dictionary. Yes. You look up words that like, what does he think about, you know, yep. sexual things or the whatever, appendix, all the, yeah. the, all the things. So I think for me, um, that the reality is like, could God help me when I battle fear or mm. anger or unforgiveness, whatever. So I would encourage anybody who's really just challenged, like, could God like heal or could Mm -hmm. God, I think it's taking your situation, your need and finding out what does God say about About your situation. And then that becomes very personal to you. It's like that may be. And then I always feel like Psalms is the book of comfort. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we go through, I love the Psalms. It's in the middle of the Bible and they're just prayers of people. And I love it because there's a lot of emotion. I'm a very emotional person. Mm -hmm. So I love when, Mm -hmm. you know, David's going through stuff and he, people are hurting him and he's like, go get them, God, destroy them. I'm like, yes, do that. God. And then he, I can't, you can exactly. And I think it's just their, their comforting um, messages, comforting prayers. So I just think it's where you're at. Like Mm. I want God to meet me personally. You know, what is going to matter to me? It's like he comforts us. I remember my one girlfriend from high school, um, I was always afraid of going to hell. I was raised with a real strong uh, believing mom that, you know, I felt like, oh, I don't want to go to hell. And so my, I had kind of a fear of hell, which kind of drew me to God. But my husband says the fear of hell is never going to keep you in heaven. Mm-mm. It's the love Mm-mm. of God that mm-hmm. keeps you there. Mm-hmm. But my That's mine awesome. was fear, drew me. I'm like, I don't want to go to hell. But I remember my friend Sharon, she just heard for the first time was raised with a real angry father, a real rejecting father she heard that Jesus loved her Mm. and just hearing those words, she's like, he could love me. And so I think that's where you just begin to just say, Lord, show me what you want me to know about how you feel Mm. about me. And I think in the, like I said, in the back of your Bible, 
you can just start looking up things in different words and finding a friend that is someone that's walking with faith. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. contacting someone. So important. Just, it really, they just help kind of shepherd you along the way and show you the love of God. So, yeah, I love that. You know, and I think, you know, for that to really be beneficial for most people, we have to be honest with yeah, ourselves. Yeah. It's like, don't be afraid of being honest with yeah. where you are. Yeah. God will meet you yeah. where you yeah. are. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And that's the thing about it. You could be going through something yeah. and he's so good. He's going to meet you where yeah. you are. Yeah. I could be going through something yeah. at the same time and he's going to come meet yes. me where I am. Yeah. Priscilla could be yeah. going through something and yeah. he's going to go meet Priscilla where she is. He's that powerful yeah. yes. of a God yes. that he could be taking care of right. all of us. And this, this switchblade is standing out to me right now. And it's Jeremiah 10, six. There is none like you, O Lord. True. You are great. And great is your mighty and powerful name. It's calling out the yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. It's that simple. It's like Jesus, yeah. yes. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. but help me know yeah. you. That's help good. me know yes. your love, yes. right? Come meet yes. me right here. Yes. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say, but yeah. I just need you right now. Right. You know, and I could recall not too long ago, a time where I was just like, I need you. I just, I need you. Yeah. Like, help me. Yeah. Like, help yes. me. I just, I yes. don't, I don't know what to say. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I'm frustrated. So just, just help me, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think it's that simple. And the appendix is a great place yes. to start, yes, right? Yep. It's like, there's, there's faith, there's right. faithfulness, right. there's, um, I saw one, it's funny, equality is wow. in here, Wow! right? Okay. Like that's a huge topic right. for yes. people right yes. now, right? Equality is yeah. in the back of my yeah. Bible. I can find scriptures right. about equality. Yeah. And so literally this is our guide yeah. and people don't see it that way. But it, I mean, this, this is life. Yeah. Well, and I always approach God and I think it was how my upbringing was too, was I think too long, too many years that I viewed that God had these guidelines and these laws yes. and these things because he's going to take away our fun. And I mean, again, you know, you I look like a pretty fun Christian. Well, I'm say. telling you, I still have managed to have a good time. <laughs> but, but my thing was, it's like, I remember hearing even a couple years ago that it was like, this, this is a love story. Yes. And the whole, from the beginning to the mm. very end, it was all about God's love for us. And the reason why he put just even some guide guidance for how to live because they would harm us. They were not good for our soul. They're not good for us. I know for me, if I, you know, murdered my neighbor across the street because he parked in front of my house, I mean, I wouldn't feel good about myself. Right? You know what yeah. I mean? So there's things that are harmful to us mm -hmm. if we do them or if we cheat or if we go against, they're not like, you can't do that to love me. Correct. It's that he doesn't want to have us live harmed. He doesn't, he, he wants us to be He doesn't protected. want you to have to go through yes, the, the, consequence the consequence of that choice. Of those things. And yes. so I have, I think I view him more that it's because of his love. It's like mm -hmm. that one verse, it's the kindness of the Lord that leads mm -hmm. me towards repentance. It's like, mm -hmm. if somebody's angry with me and somebody is just judging me yes. or condemning me, it's going to be in me to go, wait a minute. You know what? Look at you. Mm -hmm. Look at your life. But or I'm you're going to keep them so far. Oh, the message of the Lord afraid. will never be received. Exactly. Because I'm too afraid. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, I feel like it's his love that no matter what I've done, no matter who yes. I am, the disgusting thoughts that I think or the anger or whatever it is, it's like, I feel like he is that loving father just says, yes, you know, come here. And it's like, you're just more like, no, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, no. And he's so, he's so different than I've ever, ever even been trained up to know. And I feel like in this love relationship with God, I would, June will be married 40 years, which is which such is a awesome. miracle. That's awesome. In and world. I feel like I love my husband way more now than I did 40 years mm. earlier when we were younger. When and you I feel actually like, said yes. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like with Jesus, it's like, Lord, we've been through a lot. Like mm -hmm. we have been on this love journey for mm -hmm. so long and you have loved me in my brat phase and my rebellion and my resistance of you in my anger or my blame, or it's like, oh, I am done now, God. I'm yeah. running away. And I feel like I, he loves me more mm -hmm. and I love him more. I mean, I think he's, I think he loves us so much that it's yeah. beyond what we can comprehend. Our own understanding. But it's yeah. for me, I feel safer yes. and closer. Totally. And and I really do believe a lot of that is what's really brought me so closer is the relationship with who he is in the word of totally. God. Totally. Because it's his love story. Totally. Like, you know, totally. So. And I think that's really, you know, that's a good point in terms of somebody who's trying to build a walk with God or build a relationship with God. 
churches are awesome, you know, and we're, yeah. I'm fortunate that, yeah. I, that I attend a great church. But if that church wasn't yeah. there, I would yeah. still need my yes. relationship yes. with God. And yes. my relationship with God would still carry me through yep. everything yep. that life is going to throw at That's me. Good, you know, Liz. we I, I, it, it just you can't live without it. You really Completely. can't live without right. it. And when right. you choose to, you struggle. Yeah. You really, really yeah. do. But the answer is right yes. here. And what I've learned is the proactive yeah. approach. Now yes. I can take a proactive yeah. approach Absolutely. because I know better. Yes. And in my current life, I'm taking a proactive yeah. approach, yeah. right? And, you know, we talked about me not being married yet, but it's like, that's th right now, this right. is a proactive approach yes. instead yes. of slipping into those old habits yes. and making another mistake. Yes. Yes. You know, now I know how to be proactive right. to protect myself yes. because the reality of it is the choice is mine, right. but I'm going to have to live right. in that choice. Totally. And, and can, knowing that he's got the better plan. Always. You know, he's always, he's got the better plan. I always want to just tell him the plan because I think I've got the better yeah, plan. I'm one of those. And two. I'm always like, Lord, you know what? If you could do it this way. And usually the one thing he always tells me, he always goes, Shh, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, just I got quiet. It. I got it. So anyway, but Liz, I just want to thank you for this. Yes, I really, you. like, like I said, I could be. I'll be, a, I'll be a return offender. I know I'll be back. So <laughs> you will be back. Out there, yes. I am coming back. And we'll She's get Priscilla right back. over here. Oh, yeah. Middle, Priscilla's okay? our next one. So, it's but, funny with you talking about um, putting your hands in it. Our next morning cup of Jesus. Priscilla, you will meet Priscilla. And um, we're talking about the chessboard. And oh. Priscilla had this thought of a chessboard. And our life is like a chessboard. And God's hands oh, are there, right? Making the moves, to, right? Right. There's and a sometimes opponent. he's waiting and we're waiting going, come on. Well, no, you, I, what happens with right. me is I put my hands in there, yes. right? Because I think to your yes. point that I know better than God, come on. he's like the grand master of yes. chess and I'm trying to put my hands mm -hmm. in it. So we're going to, we're going to talk about That's that. Good. That's like going to that. be our next okay. episode because I think okay. that you're right is we have to trust that yeah. God has a way better yeah. plan than ours. Yeah. No matter how much control we yes. think we have us over yes. a situation. The fact no. of the matter is mm -hmm. we have no control. We, don't. we have no right. control and we need to give yep. it to him. So for those of you who are watching, thank you for thank the you. time that you spent thank today. You. Yep. I'd like to encourage you. You can find something like this yeah. um, at the store. Yep. This is a series of three by five cards. Yep. And literally it's what I have my switchblades written it. on. I love right? it. And you yep. can pull them out. You yep. can put them anywhere. So where are some of the places that you believe I, people I can do, put their switchblades? Well, plates. I just think anywhere. It's like you pack it in your bathroom, put it in your car. I think just carrying around in your purse. Yep. I love this right here, but I just think it's just, you know what? It's just wherever you are. I, I feel like I always have stuff in my Bible or put in my purse. So, but I just, again, Liz, I thank you for this. I think um, the Lord's hand is on you know, you and on just wanting to encourage others. And I just, yeah. I hope and pray that you're going to get more and more opportunities because people need to know who Jesus is and he Definitely. kind of hopefully looks like you and I, Definitely. You know, to a world that's looking for a little South saving and a little Gilroy. You're <laughs> yeah. Gilroy, right? I'm Gilroy. Gilroy. Okay, that's right. I'm Gilroy bread. We're gang bangers for Jesus. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. definitely. <laughs> we, we switch. We flip the yeah. switch a little bit. Exactly. I'll cut you still, yeah. but, you know, in the name of Jesus. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, Love thank you. you for your time okay. today. Thank you. And we hope that the word encouraged you. Pastor Kathy, thank, thank you. you for your time. We know you're a busy lady. Thank you. Um, but just thank you for just being honest, just being real, thank being relatable. And and just giving us the idea of a switchblade because I'll I tell you, it. like this switchblade has carried me through I love so it. much it now. It makes me happy um, and proud. And we can never be persecuted or prosecuted yeah. for carrying this type right. of weapon nope. with us, That's right? right? But it'll That's be right. this weapon that yep. gets us through everything yes. that the enemy will try to just throw at us yep. to destroy us. Don't let him destroy you. Yep. Get your switchblade. That's Thank so you for your time today. Have a great day. Thank you.